yeah, thanks a lot. And first of all, hello to everyone. So this is quite an extremely pleasurable moment for myself to be back here at my alma mater to share my views on lessons beyond syllabus. I mean, it was here that I, was, that I first learned, reach high for the stars, lie hidden in your soul, dream deep for every dream leads the goal. At PIS Sangli, I have had many proudful and joyful moments. Stuff that I've learned, lot of stuff that I've learned and memories that I've cherished and continue to cherish forever. So when it comes to going the extra mile, it is often thought of that, you know, we put in a bit more of hard work, we get a bit more of success. But I choose to differ. It's a lot deeper than that. You know, it's all about, it's not all about hard work. Yes, hard work is important, but what matters the most is the differentiating factor in what I call the Delta X efforts. That creative leap, that spark of ingenuity, and that itch of curiosity. This Delta X factor has what has propelled the human civilization right from the invention of the wheel to this era of artificial intelligence. So during this time, a long time in history, there have been stories, a lot many stories, stories of individuals who have bent, went beyond what was expected and doing so changed the course of history. And what's a story begins in 1938. A young chemist in the DuPont company was assigned the task of trying to develop, develop alternative, safer refrigerants for the toxic refrigerant gases used at that time. And while he was conducting his experiments with a gas known as tetrafluoroethylene, the structure is over here, he noticed something quite strange. When he was opening up a cylinder that was supposed to be full to carry out an important experiment, he released the valve and surprised, no gas came out. He tried to check the valve, check the pressure, nothing seemed to happen. When he op tried to see if the cylinder was empty, he tried to uh, take it up. He was even more surprised. The cylinder that had supposedly no gas weighed about as much as same as a full one. Completely unexpected. Intrigued, he and his assistant decided to cut open the cylinder to see what might actually be inside. And when they cut it open, they came across something quite strange. Inside, there was a white, slippery powder. Now, in that moment, the chemist realized that this was something new. In his own words, he said, my education and training had prepared to recognize the novelty. So now, as his experiment had failed, and he, he decided to move on to the next one, but before doing so, he decided to test the powder. He tried to pour water onto it, then gradually stronger acids, then a stronger base. Nothing seemed to corrode it. He tried to melt it with a blowtorch. Quite hot flames, I must say, almost 400 degrees Celsius. It didn't seem to melt. And that moment, he realized that he had something of great potential in his hand. And DuPont realized it too. And that white powder is what we know today as Teflon. Used everywhere from nonstick pans to industrial piping. And the chemist was Roy J. Plunkett. And had it not been for his efforts to do a bit extra, Maybe we would, we would not have Teflon today. And there are such more stories in the history that have propelled human civilization. In the 16th century, nobody would have thought that we would be able to circumnavigate the globe. But it was in 1522 when Magellan's expedition succeeded and he returned to Spain after traveling almost 72,000 kilometers. It took him almost three years and cost the life of all of his crew members, including Magellan himself. But today, we can easily circumnavigate the globe in less than 48 hours. In the year 1600, and since the year 1600, the human population has grown more than 14-fold. Our production capacities have grown more than 240-fold. And our energy consumption has grown more than 114 folds. This is quite an unimag unimaginable leap for humanity. And this has been made only possible by those differentiating efforts by particular individuals who decided and dared to go beyond what was expected. But these are not just stories of past, they are the stories of each one of us, the stories that we live in our lives. And for me, the differentiating moment came when I decided to do a PhD in a subject that I was interested in. It was during that time that I decided to pursue research as a career, and I dwelled, delved deeper into it, into my research subject of polymers and complex fluids, that I realized what it meant to go 
the extra mile. During conducting my research, I had to develop a computational tool by myself to study a phenomenon that could not be done so using the available ones. And that was the moment I realized what it meant to go the extra mile, not just as a motivational phrase, but as a learned experience. You see, it's not just about what is taught in textbooks. I had to go and solve uncharted problems. Nobody had ever come up to some of the solutions that I had to deal with. There was no solution at the back of the textbook that we often see. You know, in 10 board exams, when we prepare, we write the CBSC papers, we write a lot of papers. What do we do? We check at the back of the book. Is the answer correct? Is the value of x2? If it's 2, we are happy. But it's not like this. So that's what I first learned. The ability to think independently. The ability to create something from scratch. And the ability to think creatively and innovatively. So when I thought a bit more deeper about it, and had conversations with some of my, some of the alums of my institute who have gone, by, gone and done some excellent things, some of my friends and my parents, I thought about a very deep question. And that was, how could one go the extra mile, not just once, but consistently? And to do so, I have developed a five-point formula kind of thing to go the extra mile consistently. And the first one begins with setting the goal. Your goals must be clearly set. A vague ambition is like a ship without compass. It leads you nowhere. That's why you must, one must learn to set goals that are specific measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And more than every, and apart from that, the most important is you need to set a goal that inspires you and pulls you from within. The next is to develop critical thinking. Trust me, it's a superpower in today's world. It's what enables you to solve problems, break them into manageable parts, strategize your pathways, and most, of, most importantly, know what to do when plans fall apart, which they do quite often. The next is to be able to research and innovate. And by that, I don't mean just go in a lab, mix some chemicals, and research. That's not what research is about. Research is about digging deep. It's about trying to absorb as much knowledge as you can, trying to form connecting dots between the existing information, and then making something new out of that information by your own. The next one is perseverance. And I have only one thing to say about it. Perseverance is the belief. Is the strong belief in yourself that the purpose is not lost, and it's still going good, even when success isn't visible easily yet. So that's all perseverance is about. It's about that continued effort towards the goal that you have set. And the last one, and one of the most underrated, but one of the most important, is emotional intelligence. It's the empathy. It's the ability to understand and manage your own emotions, as well as those of others, because we live in a collaborative world where teamwork is the bare minimum expectation. And if you want to work with people, you need to be emotionally intelligent. So now we know what we need in our toolbox. So now let's sharpen the toolbox that we have. And it begins with critical thinking. So what is critical thinking? Because the word critical thinking is thrown around a lot. I have thrown it around more times in this particular talk. But what does it actually mean? Well, critical thinking is defined as the self-guided, self-disciplined, thinking that strives to reason at the highest level of human thought and is rooted in fair-mindedness and intellectual humility. And to be good at critical thinking, these are the five things you must be good at. The first is to be think analytically. That is, be able to understand and recognize the data in whatever you do. Be able to break down problems into simpler parts, complex problems into simple parts that you can easily solve. The next is to understand cause-effect relationship between those problems. Then once you do that and have the insights, the next is to be open-minded. And being open-minded isn't just being about being thinking out of the box. It's also about being open to creative, uh, constructive criticism. It's being open to uncomfortable truths, and it's being the, the ability to learn from them so that you make your work better, and in the process, make yourself better. And once you do that, you must also learn to ask the right questions. The right questions are the ones that will lead you to the right answer, quite obviously. And once you have all those insights, you must be able to articulate them in a well-poised manner so they can present and communicate them with others. And that is very important, as the knowledge that is not shared is the knowledge that never leaves your head. And finally, 
you must be able to draw logical conclusions, weigh in your options, and come to sound decision regarding whatever problem you're trying to deal with. So now, I hope we guys have at least a base of what critical thinking is all about. The next is a crucial question. Where to go the extra mile? And I had asked this question to my father, and the answer was very simple. Go the extra mile where the differentiating effort that you're putting in has the most differentiating impact. It's about seeing what everyone sees, but thinking what no one else thinks. And there is one very beautiful story regarding this. It's about the 2005 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine, won by uh, Marshall and Warren. So the story is such that the global medical community for a long time thought that stomach ulcers and gastritis are caused by the excess acid secretion in the stomach. But these two guys dared to question the norm. And through their deep research and understanding, they were able to postulate that it was, in fact, due to a bacteria, Helicobacter pyroli. I mean, one of that guy, it might be an example of a crazy scientist, just to prove his point, drank up a petri dish of the bacteria to prove that this actually causes gastritis. Now, this is the power of going the extra mile. The global medical community and treatment of gastritis and ulcers was transformed forever. And it saved a million lives. So, when it comes to going the extra mile, the direction is quite important. And to do so, you must ask the right questions. And as Einstein once said, the mere formulation of a problem is far more important than its solution. And creativity isn't just about solutions. It's about posing high-level questions so that you can, have, you can eliminate what is unknown. So now, our intellectual bank is all well and polished. What still remains, a very important part, is our emotions. We must be able to manage our emotions so that we can perform well in high stakes environments. You see, the delta X factors that decides who can go the extra mile or who cannot is not only dependent on your IQ, but also the EQ. And this is what, not, not something that you're naturally born with. It is a skill that you can build up and master over time. So when it comes to emotional intelligence, the four foundational concepts are, well, first is self-awareness. That is to be aware of your own emotions. The next is self-regulation. That is being able to regulate your emotions once you are able to be aware of them. This helps you a lot when it comes to reacting to high-stakes situations, because your reactions must be based on your intentions and not just plain reactions. And the next is social awareness. This is where empathy resides. The ability to not only understand your own emotions, but those of others, because we need to work with people. And the last is social skills. Social skills are where emotional intelligence comes into action. It can be in form of teamwork. It can be in form of influence. It can be in form of uh, just communicating your ideas with a large group of people. So that's where the entire setup to go the extra mile comes to an end. And as I come to the end of my talk, I'd like to leave you all with a very simple message. The extra mile is never overcrowded. In fact, it is not even crowded. Because going the extra mile demands going beyond. It's not only for the mere deemers, but it's for the doers. So. While I come to an end, I'll only say that in creative education, it all starts with imagination. Imagination leads to creativity. Creativity blossoms into thinking. Thinking leads to knowledge. It builds it up. And knowledge fuels innovation, and innovation is what makes a great nation. So I urge you all to go beyond the extra mile, to go beyond what you do, go the extra mile, question what's accepted, challenge what's expected, and go the extra mile in whatever you do. Because somewhere beyond the syllabus, there is not just more information, but there is transformation. Thank you.